What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. This is day two of the WSOP circuit event main event. And if you haven't seen the first one, you should definitely just click the link, it'll be somewhere. But I'll give you guys a lay of the land after you watch that first video, of course. I'm entering into day two here. There are 195 players left out of like 1200 entrants, give or take. 183 make the money so 12 or 13 people need a bust and then we're in the money so it's gonna be a quick like a little bubble area thing to start this tournament it's gonna be fun i have 365,000 in ships which uh starting stack was 30,000, which is apparently 14th in ships right now today out of the 195 so i'm in a pretty decent spot this is my third bullet spoiler alert if you didn't watch the first one but yeah min cash is like 2500 and first place is like 387k i think don't quote me on that it's either 287 or 387 i think it's 387 um so that would be <laughs> that would be nice there's a it's a three-day event so there's that and to give you a lay of land i i looked up the people on my table and i think i'm on a pretty good table no like real crushers or anything so it'll be fun i'm second in chips which will make things kind of interesting and there's a lot of chips at my table too surprisingly there's three players with 300,000 in chips so pretty close and then one player with almost 400,000 in chips and that's always a good sign i think it's pretty soft so i'm pretty confident um it's gonna be interesting to start out the day as the second person in chips when there's a decent amount of icm pressure that I can apply onto the smaller stacks but they really shouldn't apply that much because how deep everyone is but naturally everyone plays super tight um close to the bubble as a few players bust early today i'm gonna find a way to, and see just how these players are like if, if they care about icm good to know if they don't care about icm then i can't go bananas that's it that's my plan for today so far i'm just chilling by this uh balcony suite sitting area overlooking everything i think we're going to be playing on the stage somewhere over there so there's that like i said it's, been a, it's a long intro there's a it's a three-day event hoping for a long video hoping for a long day wishes some run good let's get onto the felt we've got like 20 minutes left to starting let's go arriving into day two we start off the action at level 16 we have 365,000 in chips to start the day. And here off with the action restarting, I have King Queen offsuit on the button. There's a hijack player who limps with about 300,000 in stack. And now onto me, I decided to put in a raise to 18,000, hoping to isolate the limper. But the small one makes the call with about 300K as well, and everyone else folds. We're going to a flop of ace, eight, eight, two spades. He checks it over to me, and I think this is a decent flop to start betting a little bit. Same with King High and the King of Spades, I decide to bet 13,000, and this player calls really quickly. After seeing a quick call from him, seems like he's capped to not super strong holdings, either just a weak ace, a draw, or a small pocket pair. When the turn comes a king, he checks again, and now a little conflicted. Considering the board right now, it should be better for me as the preflop aggressor, and with middle pair, I certainly can slow down. Conflicted between a check or bet, I decided to just play my range and bet. I err on the side of the aggression, try to get some thin value from not a whole lot, to be honest, in hindsight, but I size to 34,000, and once again, this player quickly calls. This can't be good, and when the river comes a queen, we have two pair now, but it's not as good as a pair of aces on this board. Action goes check, check, and I lose to ace, jack of diamonds. Not the best start of the tournament so far. I have under 300,000 in chips now, and with the big stack on my direct left, could be a disastrous situation as we're nearing the money bubble. Here, very close to the money bubble, I pick up jack nine offsuit on the big blind. There's a cutoff raise to 15,000, and everyone folds to me. This player has about 80,000 in chips, and considering that he raised to 3x of the big blind, it must mean he wants to give more chips than me. Considering I'm a bigger stack than him, I think he's going to fold out everything besides aces or kings, so I decide to rip it all in. No sweat here, he folds, and I'll take it down. This next clip you're going to see is the announcement that we are finally in the money. Chip stack has climbed up a little over 300,000. There is also conveniently 300,000 real US dollars for first place. Let's get it. Into the next level we go, we have Queen Jack of Spades in the low jack. There's an under the gun player who raises to 16,000. 
And here I have a good hand to see a flop with being in position of this player. I decided to make the call. The player to my left with a huge stack makes the call and this entices the small blind and big blind as well. So multi-way to the flop with a massive pot brewing so far. And the flop comes ace, 10, four, two spades. Wow. We have the spade draw. We have a gut shot to Broadway, a lot going for my specific hand. And the under the gun player decides to make a continuation bet of 38,000. Looking at this player's stack, he has like 200,000 behind. And with multiple people left to act behind me, being in position, I decided to not take the aggressive route on this hand. I think if we're out of position, it makes it much easier to raise. But here, I decided to call and everyone else folds. So let's hit an out here, please. The turn is an eight of hearts. Brings in another flush draw, but we improve to a double gut shot straight draw. So much going on for my hand, and this player decides to rip it all in. What? No way did he just do that. It's a total of 190,000, and I'm thinking in my head, look, it doesn't really matter what he has, because I have every single out imaginable, essentially, is what it seems like. Even if I'm up against a set, I'm still doing okay and happy to gamble for maybe 200,000. But I take my time in this one. It's a massive spot, this is a massive all-in, and I have a massive draw. I'm getting a hair under two to one pot odds on making the call here. And I have give or take, let's say 15 outs if I'm not against a set. If I make the call and lose, I'll only have 50,000 left to play for. Or if I decided to fold, I'll have 240,000 in my stack, which is roughly 40 big blinds. And I think about it for a while, and I think about whether I think this spot is worth the gamble. If this situation happened on the flop, I'm easily all in with two cards to come. But considering there's only one card left to come on the river, do I really want to gamble 40 big blinds essentially in my tournament life? <sighs> Sadly, I think not. Ultimately, I ended up thinking about folding and do make the fold because I have 40 big blinds. It's plenty of life and we're in the money here. I think I'm confident in my skills to navigate this chip stack versus other players at the table. So I fold, I announce my hand, and this player tells me he had pocket tens. So he did have a set. And who knows if I made the right choice to fold or not. It didn't feel comfortable with gambling at a 35% for my tournament life here when I could probably try to run a little bit deeper if I just played out all the other hands. So let's see if my decision to fold will pay off the next hand. We're on to the next level with ace eight offsuit in the big blind. There's a button player who open limps. Limps in for 8,000, he's been limping a lot. Small blind sides on making the call and here onto me. I have about 30 big blinds now. The button has 20 big blinds and the small blind covers me, but don't think the small blind player is going to be too strong as he didn't raise preflop. So I think ace eight should be ahead of a lot of limping ranges. And look, if I can fold out better aces as well, like ace nine, ace 10, then that would be really cool. I decide to go for it. I rip it all in, basically 20 big blinds effective against the button player. The button ends up calling, which is not good news. Small blind folds and we're up against ace jack off suits. Oh no, I didn't want to gamble for almost a flip with 40 big blinds, but I'm gambling, totally dominated. We're off to a flop, which comes all spades. I check my cards, I have the ace of spades. The turn gives us the nuts. Absolute suck out city. Like I said, I don't like getting it in as a flip, but if I'm getting it in dominated, I'm certainly going to win. Let's freaking go, huge bink for my stack. And this is what we needed, one lucky hand to be up over 400,000 in chips now. In the following hand, I pick up ace king offsuit in the hijack. There's a plus one raise to 23,000. This is the same player who had pocket tens when I had queen jack. Anyways, I think he has a massive tell with his preflop sizings. So him raising almost three X the big blinds and in early position seems super strong. I decided to just make the call with ace king off suit here. Think we can mix between one of those two options and here I'm just making the call. The cutoff on my left calls as well. So we're going three ways to a flop of ace eight five rainbow. Well, this is not quite the sweat anymore as I have top pair top kicker. The early position player in plus one bets out 25,000. I decide to make the call, obviously. Don't think raising makes a whole lot of sense. And the cutoff folds. Going to a turn heads up, which is the six of hearts, brings in two hearts on board. Now he decides to check. 
and on a board that should theoretically favor me with more lower cards on this board here. I have a strong hand. I'm going to bet for value and hope to get called by worse. I size up to 105,000. Can certainly get some worse aces to call. Some worse pocket pairs can get sticky as well. But this player decided on a fold. Fold pocket queens face up. So I did avoid winning a huge pot here by not three betting preflop. But it was a flip, essentially. Nice to hit it, I guess, this time. And I'm okay with not winning the max. Following that hand, I pick up pocket nines in plus two. There's an ungun player with a short sack raises to 16,000. Here, early position first, early position. I make the call and action folds around to the big blind, who's in here as well. So three ways to a flop of 10, 8, 6, rainbow. The big blind checks it over to the ungun player and he takes his time thinking his thoughts out and then goes all in. Oh, okay, he's got a pretty short stack. And here, if I was playing heads up, this is obviously a very easy call, but because there's the big blind player to left to act behind me, it makes things a little more tricky. Essentially, I still can't talk myself out of a fold here with basically second pair. Just gonna hope and pray that the big blind doesn't have a 10 and he'll snap fold. So I call the ungun players all in. But while I do that, the big line doesn't snap fold. He actually thinks about this decision for a long while, which is not good for me. Eventually, he shows his cards to the table. He has 10-9 off suits and folds. Oh my god, he's going to fold top pair, and the only gun player shows 6-7 of clubs. Not only did it make a bluff call to fold out the best hand, we're up against the worst one, and the runout is clean. Bink City for us. The stack is growing over 600,000 now in my stack and things are going quite well. This next hand's a fun one with King Queen offsuit on the button and action folds to me. I raise it up to 20,000. We get the small blind player to make the call. Then the big blind puts in a raise now to 72,000. I've seen this player be super active so far and three bet early and often in this tournament. And I don't think this player is going to be getting out of line by any means when I say that. I just think he's doing it a lot. But I look at his stack. He has about 250,000 chips in play, which is give or take 30, 35 big blinds. And with king queen off suits, I think my hand's a really good candidate to four bet, rip it all in. Realize all of my equity with two cards that are pretty high up there and also two cards that remove the possibilities of a strong hand like ace king or pocket kings or pocket queens. So I think I can do it. Basically just jam and hope for a flip if this player calls or fold out a lot of flips as well. So I decide to go all in, small blind folds and the big blind tanks for a while. He announces that it's close, which... I'm not sure what that means and what he's thinking, but he ends up folding. I'll take the free 85,000 in the middle and add it to my stack. Pretty nice going here. Seems like he definitely folded a hand better than King Queen, I'll tell you that much. And oh well, happy to take it down preflop. Whew, what an eventful few levels. Things went up and down. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Stacks looking healthy for the most part. I just played one hand that I didn't show in the vlog. It was pretty short. I ran Ace King into Queens. But um, I three bet against like the other big stack at the table, of course, at the battle. The poor texture didn't run out in such a way where there are any bets on the flop Turner Rivers and he had queens and I, I lost like 55,000. So there's that. Um, there's 103 players left. I don't know how much we locked up, but goal is always number one. So just trying to survive, keep chipping up. But I have a really good chip stack. There's a, there's a bunch of chips at my table. So hopefully everything goes well. <sighs> All right, try to run up, that's all. Report back when we're back after break. Coming from after the break, this hand with ace jack of hearts in the low jack, I raise to 22,000 and the button jams like 100K, give or take. Folds to me and sure, whatever. I decide to make the call with a really good hand versus a 10 big blind jam and of course he shows like the nuts. Ace king suited. Totally dominated once again, but that hasn't stopped us from winning before. The flop isn't great, but we bink a jack on the turn. Let's go. Huge suck out. Once again, getting it in, totally dominated, and coming out, scooping up chips. Gotta love that. Nice to win this one and eliminate this player and continually chipping up over 700,000 in my stack now. Moving on to the next hand with so many players busting from my table. We're only playing six handed. It's a little short handed here. I have ace jack offsuit in the cutoff and raise it up to 27,000. The player in the big one has a huge stack and decides on a call. 
So we're going to a flop of six, three, deuce, two diamonds. And when action checks it over to me, I think this board is going to be way better for the big blind player. Sitting with ace high, don't think I have much of a decision besides just a check back. We see a turn which comes another six. And this time, he bets out 18,000 into the middle. And sitting with ace, jack, high, he can betting his range. He has a lot of error and missed on this board. I think it's a pretty good price to continue and call. So let's do that. We're off to a river now, which comes a king. So the board really doesn't change a whole lot here. And surprisingly enough, this player bets 68,000. Sizing way up now on the river. I don't think this line makes a whole lot of sense for value. Essentially, like I said, this king is a brick. And I also unblock a lot of hands that could bluff a lot, like his 10-9 suited, 8-7 suited, random 8-5. Like, the big one's going to have a lot of air ball here. And when he bets this big, seems like he's only betting so big with a 6, because that has trips, and that's a good hand. But if he had a hand that contained a pair of 3s or deuces, or even a small pocket pair... Betting this large doesn't make too much sense for me. So trying to piece things together, it seems like he's going to have a really strong hand or a complete bluff. And when this is the case, I am going to be a non-believer thinking that ace jack high is going to be good a lot of the time. So I call and he shows me eight, six off suit. Now, of course, there's not many people that bluff in these tournaments, it seems. So much for my thinking process. He just has the nuts. But, you know, at least I thought that was going to be a possibility. So the chip stacks down to close to 600,000 and time to rebuild. We're in the big bind ourselves with six, seven off suits. There's a plus one open at 27,000. Action folds to me and this is certainly defendable. I make the call playing about 50 big blinds deep. We're off to a flop which comes a five, six, seven rainbow. Oh my God. Amazing flop from my hand and even better for my range. I decide to lead here as I think the other player is gonna check back a lot. I lead for 25,000. And for 25,000, this player decides on a call. So we've got a pot building here. The turn is the queen of spades, bringing two spades on board. And I think now with the queen on the turn, it changes some stuff. Overall, this card should be better for my opponent opposed to me. So I decided to check this one and not continue firing, although I have a really strong hand. But he does the betting for me, 55,000 to go. And I think I have an easy call, although raising could make a lot of sense because, look, if this player is going to have a pair of queens, I get a lot of value from it. If he's going to have some flush draws, I also get a lot of value from it playing out of position. Anyways, I just decided to make the call as played with two pair. Let's see a river which comes a brick. Hopefully it's a jack. Here, another face card. I'm going to check it over to him and let him do the betting, whether he's bluffing or value betting. He decides to bet 75000 and I don't think now on this board texture I can raise. So I just make the call and good news, he has ace king high. Nice hand for us to win and come back on the rebound trail. I'm happy with how I played this hand and maybe I might've just gotten the max letting him bluff turn and river. So we're back to about 800,000 in my stack now and this next hand strap the F in. Let's get into this. I have ace king of hearts in plus one. I raise it up to 27,000 and get some action as the player to my left and big blind both call. These are the two players with the biggest stacks at the table. So let's get cracking into this one. Multi-way and I'm out of position. The flop comes queen, queen, four, rainbow with one heart. I decided to check here as I'm out of position. I've totally whiffed and honestly, not really going to connect too much with this board. So I check the player to my left checks and the player on the button decides to bet out 35,000. Here with ace king high, I have backdoor straight draws, backdoor flush draws, and two over cards. Not going anywhere for this price. I make the call and the other guy folds. So big pot brewing here, going to a turn, which comes a 10. Not a heart, but it does give me the gut shot straight draw to Broadway. I start with a check again, and this player thinks and bets out 42,000. Thinking that this is a little strange to size down so much here. But certainly just never folding as I see a turn that has given me some improvement and some extra equity. He's betting so small once again here where I'm just forced in here with ace king high. So let's make the call and hopefully bank on the river. The river is the seven of hearts. Brick city for us. 
Sitting with Ace-King High, I decided to check again, hoping to just get the showdown. Maybe Ace-King High can win sometimes. But he now decides to not check it back and blast away 93,000 into the middle. Okay, well, let's let's think this through now. Sitting with Ace-King High, hero calling, three streets here, especially in the river, definitely out of the question, I think. I also think folding here is also extremely reasonable, but let's just think about some hands that's going to value bet all three streets on this run out and board. Obviously, there's a queen. You can certainly have that. But besides that, uh, there's not much else that's really strong, is there? Everything else that he would bet for thin value, unless he had pocket tens, is going to be in a gross spot if I were to put in a check raise. He might have pocket jacks. He might have a 10 maybe and certainly could have a lot of bluffs as well. So I'm basically talking myself into a check raise here to fold out all of his thin value bets for three streets and also bluffs. If this player somehow has a queen, then you know this is not gonna work as well. It's gonna be a massive punt. So regardless, I think it's a decent spot to at least make an attempt, especially when no one check raises the river as his bluffs. I go and size up to 235,000, and this player tanks. Upon this decision, we, it's announced that we're on dinner break. So with this big pot brewing, a bunch of people are on break. There's a crowd starting to form around the table to see what the hell's going on. And I'm just staring at the board, trying to not move or give off any tells, but this player is going through it, it seems. I'm praying for a fold, obviously, as this is a massive and crucial spot to win. Then he starts talking out loud and announces that he beats Queen Jack. Oh my god, at least three minutes have gone by on this river decision, and he beats Queen Jack? Is he really considering folding a queen to me? Does he ever watch the channel? <laughs> Clearly not, it seems. A few more seconds goes by, and he throws king-queen of clubs into the freaking muck. No way. Let's freaking go. What an incredible way to move on to dinner break with over 1 million chips. I got away with murder. Got this guy to fold a queen somehow, especially to me. Maybe the, he should start doing some research on his opponents and know that I probably don't have it ever. But regardless, I'm going to take it down and the vibes are super positive going into dinner break. Holy F. <laughs> that hand just happened. We're like four, five minutes late into dinner break right now. Wanted to record this before I just get some food in me. Pretty hungry. He folded King Queen. He folded King Queen. Not the plan to fold a, king, a, a queen, but uh, ah, good for him. Thank you to him. I have over a million chips. There's 65 players left and 300k up top. That's all that matters right now. Got away with murder again. So sick. Um, yeah, I'm going to go rush to get some dinner because it takes a little bit to get some food here, walk around. Um, yeah, got an hour to chill, going to relax. But holy F, he folded a queen. Mind fuck right there. Thank goodness. Uh, yeah, got away with murder. I'll see you guys after dinner break. Coming back from dinner break and feeling great, I have ace 10 off suit in the big blind and action folds to the small blind who decides to limp with 700,000 in the stack. Here, I make a blunder. I think I'm just supposed to raise this a lot of time, but decided to just check this one back and see a flop of king, queen, five, two diamonds. He decides to bet out 30,000 into the middle here, about two thirds sized bet. And I'm not going anywhere here with ace 10 high on this board. Definitely can rep a lot or hit my outs. I make the call. The turn comes the 10 of spades, brings in two spades on the board. And he decides to bet again for 40,000. Okay, now that I've hit a pair, blind versus blind, that's pretty hard to do. So still think that this is a good candidate to continue calling. Also can now bluff, repping the flush if the river comes a spade. Have the ace of spades in my hand. That's a pretty good card to have. I call again. The river is now the six of spades. Wow. He again fires for a third time, 60,000. And here I'm definitely not going to hero call with just third pair but I certainly am going to stick with the plan and rep spades with the ace of spades in my hand. I decide to raise now to 225,000, thinking that if a player can fold trips to me, then, well, certainly could fold a weak holding with whatever he could have, but he thinks about it for a while and immediately doesn't look happy, which 
ultimately, I guess he's not comfortable, and at least I'm putting players in uncomfortable spots. Sadly, he does make the call with 10-6 of hearts. What an incredibly awful run of cards for me. He went runner-runner to pair and hit the perfect cards for me to bluff on. I lose a really big chunk of my stack, and this all started, though, with my preflop blunder. If I just raise preflop, he calls, and I bet the flop, he's out of there. Sadly, this happened, and I'm down a chunk. In the following hand, I pick up 8-6 of hearts in the big blind once again. There's a hijack raise to 35,000. Action folds to me, and this hand's really defendable and playable. I make the call. We're going to a flop of jack, 9-9, nine, nine, rainbow, and action here is going to go check, check. So we're going to see a free turn, which comes a seven of diamonds. So sitting with an open-ended straight draw when eight high, it's not great. So let's just try to steal it. I bet out 40,000, hoping to win the pot with eight high. And I can't do it just yet. He makes the call. So sitting with eight high, gonna need a win, hopefully. The river is a four of spades. Not the bank that we're looking to see. So close to being a five, though. So if it was a five, I would certainly blast off like I had value. And I'm going to blast off as a bluff here again on the river. I decide to bet out 95,000, and he calls pretty quickly with pocket queens. Okay. I'm not having fun anymore. <laughs> you know, my river check raise got through before the dinner break. But after the dinner break, I'm getting owned. My stack is down to 550,000 at this point. All right, with things not trending in the right direction, it can show how quickly tournaments can go awry. With under 500,000 in the stack, I have ace 10 offsuit and plus one and raise it up to 35,000. And I get some bad news as the hijack three bets to 100,000. Action folds to me and I can't continue with this specific hand. So I fold and even worse news, the blinds have been increased. It was a bad level 21. Didn't win a single hand. I started at 1 million in chips right after dinner break and ending this level at 420 big blinds. So moving on to this new level, I vote 400,000 in stack with 44 players left. After the blinds pass me, I'm down to just a hair over 300,000. And then we arrive into this hand with king nine of hearts. We're in the small blind and there's a hijack raised to 45,000. Sitting with my chip stack, I have 16 big blinds and I'm going to be all in a lot. And facing a relatively late position raise, let's try to target that with this specific hand. Think I have good equity to jam, so I'm going for it. I rip it all in, the big line folds, and this player doesn't take too long before a call. All right, he has ace 10 off suit. We have 40%, let's try to hit, and the flop is just terrible for my hand. It's so good for ace 10, and the turns and rivers do not improve us. So king high is not going to win this, and GG's to my opponent. Good luck to everyone else, but I'm busted in 36th place. Fuck. Uh, bound to happen. Um, I guess looking back, king nine actually is incorrect of a jam, but whatever. Pretty awful flop to be against ace 10 on queen jack high. So I had like a, I had like only not many outs, six outs. 10 gives me a straight that he was holding. Nine gives me a pair and that's it. And I'm out. 39th place out of like 1200 entrants, 54, 21 total, 5,400 bucks. Basically, uh, I think the only thing I'm really upset about was, was me being an idiot and like slow playing my ace 10 off big blind versus small blind when I when I raised the river with the nut flush blocker and then he just fucking ran runner runner two pair somehow just like a brutal fucking run out where I'm obviously bluffing <laughs> and he just goes 10 six and like it's all my fault because I let him limp and I checked my option with a really good hand that raises like 90 nine percent of the time so there's that that was an issue if i just raise he calls take it down on the flop like whatever i, I still have like i still have a million in chips actually at, in that spot and then some things could have played out a little bit differently i didn't need a bust with the king nine and uh yeah but i don't know i guess king nine's a little little a little bad i don't know there's a spot earlier in a different tournament that i learned that queen nine suited was a jam versus cutoff open but versus hijack open it's not whatever 300k up top down in flames i'm pretty upset not happy about it this is like t two minutes after i busted so like live reaction this is why i never try to record outros when i bust a tournament right after it happens so they get pretty upset and i just beat myself up because i'm trying to win every tournament 
and it's very unrealistic, but that's how I am. But thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sticking around this two part video series. Ah, couldn't do it, couldn't spin it up. I was pretty short and pay jump. There was like a pay jump, four people busting away. I had two little chips and I thought King Nine was a good spot. He made a correct call and that is it. So thanks so much for watching guys. Uh, fuck me, that's all I have to say. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit that like button. More tournaments to come, more cash games to come. Peace.